A motor driver circuit designed with a bridge amplifier is explained in this video. This is the 205th video in the analog circuit playlist. We would like to see how the circuit works, what is the output voltage Vout, as shown as a function of the input voltage applied to drive the motor, and then finally what, is, what are the proper choices of circuit components including the up amp and the buffer, high current buffer in this circuit. As we go through the analysis, I'll talk about potential good choices from Texas Instrument for the op amp, for example, OPA2810, a dual channel op amp, and also LMH6321 for the high current buffer driver. All right, so let's do the quick analysis in this uh, circuit. So input voltage V in applied to the positive input terminal or non-inverting terminal of op amp number one, uh, and also we have a counterpart op amp 2 so these being uh, the same type of low current uh, op amp or amplifier we can select them from a package that has dual channel for example the 2810 uh, OPA 2810 that I mentioned so there are two op amps in that in single package now uh, this op amp uh, while we have a good degree of freedom is a low current op amp so in order to be able to drive the motor at the output of this circuit with the polarity default polarity that is shown that is alternating alternating as well we would like to have a relatively high current buffer depending on mo uh, the motor requirement uh, so for this one uh, in this example i'm using a buffer or high input driver with up to 300 milliamp current drive of course, we can go, depending on application, with other choices that can drive higher current or with transistors at the output of these buffers as well. But uh, the way that the circuit works right now is, as we can see, for uh, op amp number one and for the high current driver buffer op number, uh, let's say, two here, uh, we have a negative feedback that is functioning for both so this is as you can see completely wired as a buffer so the uh, unity gain buffer basically so what happens is we have the output connected to the negative terminal or inverting terminal so that's basically just a gain of one and we also have the output via resistor r2 connected to negative terminal of the op amp number one so if we have the proper bias for the op amps and for the buffer uh, then these op amp and buffer both of them uh, they are in linear region so because they are in linear region it means and it's enforced by negative feedback then we are benefiting from virtual short which then uh, with the placement of the buffer in the negative feedback of the amplifier we are just basically enabling a non-inverting amplifier here so the virtual short says that for all of them we should have the positive and negative terminal having the same voltage so if fin is applied the positive terminal for op amp one therefore for negative terminal via virtual short we are guaranteed that we have v in there as well so and there is no current of course can go in or f come out of the input terminal of the op, op amp due to uh, effectively infinite impedance so what happened is now we have a current like uh, any default non-inverting amplifier that is flowing this way and therefore the voltage at the output here let's say v out uh, for op amp two for basically the buffer number two in this case would be just a simple scale up via this voltage division across r2 and r1 to uh, from vn to v out okay so how do we calculate that? That would be just basically saying uh, a KVL, V out 2. So I'm just doing a simple KVL, which says V out 2 is simply equal to uh, this current I that is flowing through R2 and R1. And uh, then, so it would be just R1 plus R2 in series effectively times the current I. But then the current I, let me just write it this way. But then the current I simply is v in across r1 divided by r1 so the current i is v in divided by r1 as a result if i substitute for r i then we get the v in divided by r1 and hence we get what we expect for um, similar to just the traditional non-inverting amplifier we get one plus r2 over r1 that is also applicable in this uh, generalized version of the non-inverting amplifier 
with uh, a buffer inserted in the feedback loop. Okay, so that's what we're going to get for V out 2 as a function of Vn in this scenario. Now, what happens for the rest of the circuit on the right-hand side? So, on the right-hand side, effectively, if we look at V out 2 as the input for the combined version of op amp and buffer, we have effectively a generalized version of inverting amplifier because the positive terminal of op amp 2 is uh, of up, let's say, let's name this as number three and this one number four. So for the amplifier shown here, up amp shown here, the second uh, channel, uh, let's say available in uh, OPA 2810 that has two up amps inside one package. So we are using the second up amp. Then uh, from that perspective, we have positive terminal grounded. And since again virtual short is valid for the same reason for these two uh, op amp 3 and buffer number 4, uh, the, the 0 should appear here as well. So I'm going to write it here. So 0 volt should be here. And therefore as a result, uh, because this is just a buffer with unity gain, so whatever appears uh, at this node, let's refer to, basically at this node, let's refer to it as V out 4 then it should be here as well as a result and it should be here as well in uh, if uh, we have negative feedback as it is so then the current that is flowing uh, let's say uh, in this scenario the current that is flowing this way is going through r3 and then since there is no current that can flow or come out of the input terminal of op amp number three then that current should continue going through let me show it in a better fashion. So it should go to R3 as well here. So if we have V out 2, there will be a basically just a V out 2 drop across R3. Given that this node is forced to 0 via virtual short. And then effectively we have a virtual ground here. And then uh, for the same reason, this is same resistor as this resistor. So we should, and because the same current is going through them, we should have exactly same voltage drop of V out 2 and therefore this node is negative V out 2 as expected so basically let me just write it properly here so I'm going to use this color negative V out 2 at this node so uh, effectively we have a, in, an inverting amplifier here with a gain so I can say similar to the same scenario writing the KCL here which says the same current going in, same current going out. Um, so we get V out 4 is equal to mi uh, minus R3 over R3. So it will be as simple as minus R3 over R3 times V out 2. And uh, because, of course, these two are equal, then we're going to get V out 4 equal to minus V out 2. That's great. So again, this combination that is shown here is our non-inverting. So this one is our non-inverting amplifier or generalized non-inverting amplifier. Let me just write it here so that it's clear. So uh, effectively a, a combined with buffer non-inverting amplifier. And the scenario we have here on the right side is a combined with buffer in the loop inverting amplifier. Which enables us to have a proper symmetricity in the circuit because on one side effectively on this side of the, uh, let's say the driver for the motor, we are applying V out 2 which is related to uh, v, v in with this equation. And then on the other side, we are applying, we are applying uh, V out four, which is exactly the negated version of V out two. So we will have basically just, let me just use a different color. We will have at this node, negative V out two, and we have at this node, just positive V out two exactly as we want it. So what's the benefit? The benefit for this design is then we are able to go with double value of the voltage, meaning if, for example, 
we are benefiting from, say, in the case of OPA LMH 6321, we have up to, say, plus minus 15 volt allowed for uh, the supply range for the buffer. So basically, uh, these could be plus minus up to plus minus 15. So let's say if we go 10, for example, if I go with VN, then in the range of, let's say, up to plus minus 1 volt at input, then, uh, of course, depends on the choice for R2 and R1. For example, let's say if I go with, um, just as an example, given that we have this situation here, if I go with, let's say, 1 and uh, 1 kilo ohm for R1, and I suggest to use uh, good resistors with low tolerances, so let's say 1 kilo ohm and 10, or let's say as an example, uh, 9 kilo ohm here, or let's go with 10, 10 kilo ohm here, and then let's say for R3, I can use as a matching scenario 11 kilo ohm or 10 kilo ohm, that works well, but uh, then what we're going to get is 1 plus 10k over 1k and times Vn, so it gives us 11 times Vn gain for just V out 2. And uh, therefore, negative V out 2 will be, in this scenario, will be negative 11 Vn. So what happens is, on one side, we are providing uh, 11 Vn drive, and then on the other side, we are providing negative 11 Vn. So that total, so the delta in a differential fashion between these two, effectively translate to plus minus 22 uh, Vn, which in this case, with the design choices I just mentioned. In this case, given that we are limiting V into plus minus 1 volt, then this means plus minus 22 volt uh, for the drive force uh, for the V out, while we just uh, uh, only need plus minus 11 volt at the output of the buffer, which is exactly in range of the plus minus 15 volt supply for the buffer. So those are, those are the benefit of uh, this circuit and uh, using the bridge-connected amplifier to drive the motor. I hope uh, this example, along with discussion of the proper choices of the, for, the, for the low current amplifier and for uh, the high current uh, buffer driver, uh, this example is helpful uh, so that uh, there will be a practical use case for this circuit. Thanks for watching.